Hello, my name is Jan Freitag, National Director for Hospitality Analytics for the CoStar Group, and here is what's on our radar for this month. The preliminary 2021 data was released. We're going to look at weekday weekend performance and then finish with a look at the transactions for the year. Let's get started. Year-end 2021 performance was very strong, with December closing out with the strongest ADR ever recorded for December, and New Year Eve week with the strongest RevPAR for that week ever. So RevPAR was around 3% higher than it was two years ago. Leisure travelers flocked to cities and destinations across the U.S., lifting room demand and room rates, especially at the high-end resorts. The full-year occupancy was reported at 58%, which is a remarkable recovery from last year. As we had commented elsewhere, this recovery is fascinating because of the rebound in room rates. Traditionally, room rates recover much slower than room demand. In this recovery, however, room rate and room demand are recovering at roughly the same pace, and annual ADR is now only $6 below where it was two years ago. You can see in the forecast to 2024 that room rate growth is slowing. This will be a function of corporate demand and lower rated group demand returning to downtown hotels. Nonetheless, the American leisure travel is expected to continue its strong demand, which should continue to give pricing power to leisure destinations. The expectation is that 2019 results will be hit by 2023, but keep in mind that that result is not adjusted for inflation. And if we do so, then ADRs won't hit 2019 levels until 2025. One other way to look at the leisure data is to look at weekday and weekend performance. Traditionally, weekends had a slightly higher absolute level of occupancy. You can see on this chart that the point premium for weekends was between two and five points or so in 2019. But through November of 2021, the point premium is now much more pronounced on weekends. So now let's look at rates. In 2019, weekend room demand was often slightly higher, especially in Q2 and Q3. That relationship has completely changed now, and weekend rates are between $5 and $25 higher. The American leisure consumers voted with their wallet to go to resorts and high-end destinations, and those have been able to exert pricing power for quite some time now. We're closing with a look at the deal volume for 2021. Coast today suggests that around $45 billion of hotel assets were traded last year, which is the second strongest year after 2015. Looking forward, we fully expect that asset sales will continue at a brisk pace. For the first three weeks of this year, an indicator, it bodes well for new, well-positioned limited service hotels in markets that have some leisure appeal. Now that we have a full year of recovery data under our belt, underwriting for the next five to 10 year horizon is much easier, and that will likely attract funds that have stayed on the sidelines throughout the prior 18 months. 2021 was a record year with regards to percent changes for ADR occupancy and RevPAR, and a lot of this was driven by the American leisure consumer. And we just hope for the sake of the downtown hotels that people will return to the office in stronger numbers, which then should drive corporate transient demand and corporate group demand as well. I'll continue to comment on the ongoing recovery in demand and room rate right here, and I will see you next month. Until then, I wish you well. I wish you health.